Hello everyone, Father Jared coming to you. And um, recently there's been a lot of talk, you know, as Beacons Light goes, moves forward about, you know, where are we going to call our family parishes and what are, how are different families kind of determine that. And, you know, some, fam some families have decided to go with, you know, temporary names for the time being. And why are we doing that or what exactly is the process? So first, I think it's important for us to recognize why it's important to pick a patron and well, then I think it'll be a better, better able to understand why I'm not quite, why I want us to just be patient and develop that process so that way, um, so that way we can walk into that process and our patron actually becomes our patron. And because a patron saint, uh, you know, the name of a parish is very, very significant. It's important. Um, it bears a lot of power in terms of who do we turn to and exactly how do we identify ourselves, you know? So for example, in our family of parishes, we have, you know, St. Michael in Fort Laramie. Why is St. Michael so significant? Well, St. Michael, the archangel, is in Book of Revelation, the one who leads God's army and in, in victory over Satan. So he's the one that cast Satan out of heaven. He's the one who overthrows that rebellion against God. And so every time we pray the St. Michael prayer at the end of Mass, St. Michael defend us in battle, we have a great intercessor on our behalf who wants to defend us against the wiles of the enemy, who wants to help us to overcome the snares of Satan and wants to drive his power from our lives, from our world. So that that patron is significant for that reason. Then, you know, we have Sacred Heart of Jesus. And Sacred Heart of Jesus is such an important kind of develop, devotion in the church because in the 17th, yeah, the 17th century, whenever Jesus was appearing to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, there was this tendency within, you know, a lot of different spiritual religious circles at the time to simply identify God as like this abstract idea. He was this sky far away on a cloud. He was an idea. But the Sacred Heart, the revelation of the Sacred Heart and this devotion that was given to the church at that point, obviously as Sacred Heart was revealed in the Gospels whenever Jesus became flesh, whenever the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. But the Sacred Heart of Jesus is such an important devotion because it showed us that God had a human heart. It showed us that Jesus loved us in his humanity, that with his human heart, he loved us. And so he can also identify with our, our weaknesses, our failings that were told in the letter to the Hebrews. If he has a human heart, he can also understand kind of the, the reason and the ways in which our heart can be somewhat times tortuous, confusing, and pained. And so the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the, the uh, patron of McCartyville's parish, it's an indication of God's overflowing love and that his love was made incarnate, made into a real person in the person of Jesus Christ. And then we have Saints Peter and Paul in Newport. Saints Peter and Paul are the two pillars of the church. Oftentimes, and you know, oftentimes their statues are next to their associate with each other because they were both martyred in Rome. Saint Peter being the first pope that Jesus said of him in Matthew 16, you are Peter and upon this rock I will build my church. So he becomes the first and foundational member of the, of the apostles, the one who is kind of the, the head honcho, so to speak. He's the one who gives direction to the early church. And then he's martyred in Rome. And then also St. Paul, the great convert, the one who was persecuting the church and perhaps the greatest persecutor of the church until his conversion. And with his conversion, he becomes the greatest evangelist in the church's history. And so we, with both of these figures, we have the example of St. Peter, who's the steadfastness in faith, even though he's kind of can sometimes be a bit of a bumbling fool. And you have St. Paul, who's this kind of this very razor sharp intellect, along with this like intense will um, that just preached the gospel to so many people and brought so many people to faith, across, faith in Christ in the early church. And then holy angels. Holy angels, that, that is the guardian there, the patron there is the guardian angels. Holy Angels, the main guardian or the main patron is guardian angels. And so it's a reminder that each of us has a guardian angel, that because of our dignity as human beings, because we are also spiritual beings along with material beings, the Lord has given us a spiritual guardian, someone to, along with St. Michael, defend us in battle, to be there with us, to guide us through this life in those spiritual moments of darkness, of despair, that God has sent his messengers, his angels, to save us, to protect us, to be with us, to accompany us in life's journey. And so you see all these patrons kind of bring with them these special flavors and the special aspect and the special devotion. 
And so whenever we're talking about a patron, we're talking about ultimately someone or a certain aspect of the Lord, Lord's life or Our Lady's life that help us to better understand our faith and ultimately give us a sort of flavoring, so to speak, give us something to focus on, give us an aspect and some key insights into what the faith is really about. And so as we look at choosing a patron, this, this patron is not just going to simply be a name. It's also going to be someone that we rely upon as an example. So someone that sets a good example for us, and obviously all the saints do that, but in a particular way sets a good example for us as you know, Catholics in the 21st century in Shelby County. Someone who intercedes on our behalf. So someone who has great power at God's hand to help intercede on our behalf, perhaps in a very specific way. You know, patron saints are often patron saints of something specific. You know, like St. Teresa of Avila is the patron saint of those who suffer from headaches. You've got St. Jose Maria Escriva, who is the patron saint of those who suffer from diabetes, and so on and so forth. Patron saints have certain things that they're, they're known for assisting the faithful with. And so whenever it comes to the patron, you know, choosing one's saint patron for a parish, this is also something you might intercede on behalf. And then finally, it's fitting for all everyone. So it's a way of uniting, ultimately, that in this saint, in many ways, we will rely upon them to help draw us into one family, into family parishes and one day one canonical parish. And so a patron is one who, again, sets an example, but then also intercedes on our behalf. So this is why it's going to be very important for us. And this is why I don't want to like just choose a temporary one because then it may become we may become known as, you know, the Saints ABC parish, you know, or Shelby County Catholic and we will fail to identify ourselves with what will one day be our actual patron. So the reason why I'm still just using Northwest 7 is because well, it's not going to stick, so it's easy enough to use for now, but then I want to take our time and choosing a patron so that we can ultimately uh, you know, we can ultimately choose someone or something, you know, an aspect of the Lord that is going to help draw us deeper into our faith and is going to help to unite us as Catholics here in this part of the world in Shelby County. And so I just want to kind of give an explanation there to help you to understand why it's taking place. And obviously in October, I said like that first weekend, I'm going to have kind of some indication on how we can help to begin un unruling or unraveling kind of that and how we can start how you can start kind of contributing to that process of making suggestions and offering your insights into what you and who you think would be a good patron. So I hope that helps a little bit to understand exactly what's going on. I know I'm talking really fast right now, I just realized, but alas, I'm eight minutes in, so you're stuck with this. But know that my prayer is for you and I hope each and every one of you have a blessed week. God bless you.